Saints fans and who dats from all over the world. This is Kyle T. Mosley of the Saints News Network. I'm here with Son of the Saint Foundation's director and founder himself, Mr. Sonny Lee. How you doing, Sonny? How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great considering. How are you? Oh, good, good. How's everything in New Orleans so far with uh, you and your family? Uh, family's fine. I mean, I have a six-year-old running around, so, uh, <laughs> you know, he's getting impatient at certain things. He wants this, this uh, to be all resolved quickly so he can go uh, hang out with his grandparents and, you know, his friends. So yeah. uh, we're, we're teachers now, as uh, most people are during wow. this time, uh, you know, homeschooling. So, uh, but it, it's fun. It's a lot of food, a lot of cooking, uh, a lot yeah. of Netflix. <laughs> That's <laughs> too so yeah netflix and my son has me doing disney plus so yeah oh yeah disney plus and i've been catching up on some good books and uh you know all was good yeah well look i hope everything continues to go well and look let your son know he's not the only one all of us are six-year-olds right now wanting this <laughs> to be over <laughs> i will i will let him know for sure yeah. Well, look, uh, one of the main reasons why I brought you onto the program is because you've been doing such a great job in the New Orleans community for a number of years now. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Son of a Saint Foundation. Yeah. Well, Son of a Saint, we started back in 2011. Um, you know, my, my father actually passed away when I was three years old um, in 1984. And uh, he passed away in front of me, died of a heart attack. Uh, he played with the New Orleans Saints from 71 to 75. Um, and, you know, I had a, a, a pretty good upbringing outside of losing my father and, and having some anger issues there. And, and uh, But for the most part, I had a great education. Um, you know, uh, I felt safe. I felt loved by family. I was raised by a lot of women. So, um, <laughs> you know, um, and I had some great work experiences working with the Saints, Um uh, working for the ownership for a few years and um and you know i, I just decided to help boys that uh are growing up fatherless right for right. various reasons whether their fathers have been lost to violence long-term incarceration natural causes so um we started in 2011 i started with five boys and really the goal was it to be very holistic um, in, in our approach, um, not just at school, or not just at home, um, not just, uh, you know, with their friends, but really just, just well-rounded um, and, 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 and offering a lot of um, opportunities for them. And so we just started plugging away, um, and then five grew to where we are right now, which is um, over 100, 100 wow. boys going on to 200 boys. We're going to do a big jump. Wow. Um, in that because of a facility that we're able to we're able to um to to own and that will help us get our numbers up and then also with uh the, the financial support that we've been getting from the community to help us you know really put the, the programming uh, the, the staff in place and and uh, and all that i mean we obviously need that to to, to help manage the boys right. so right yep yeah. Well, well, do you guys house some of the boys from time to time, or do you yeah. guys just have? A, a yeah, camp? well, I mean, it, the, the, we don't. I mean, we have. You know, if there's if there's emergency situations or crisis, we have we coordinate um, places for them to stay. We don't have it at. Uh, we don't house them at at our facility. Um, so basically, like a lot of the the work we do. Um, it's pretty much long term and preventative. The the boys join at around age ten okay. years old. They're with us to their twenty one. Mm -hmm. uh, each boy, so it's a long period of time. Uh, we pair them with a mentor. Um, we also have about twenty or so group activities that we put on as an organization um, okay. to help those relationships with their mentors. That mm -hmm. mentor can attend. They can attend. Um, we also focus on education and having. Uh, we have tutors and um, we also have. Uh, uh, Great monitoring. We have an education coordinator that manages all that. Also, ACT prep, college um, oh, really? preparation. Uh, we have a full-time mental health specialist that focuses on a lot of the um, trauma that the boys have going on. Um, you know, we have over 72% of our boys have, have uh, lost their fathers to violence. About 16 witnessed their father being murdered. Um, oh, wow. And then we have over 20 or so percent long-term incarceration, so and some natural causes. So um, there's some trauma there, and uh, and so we want to definitely address that. Um, and there's also travel uh, where we, you know, over the summer, um, parent our boys.
areas with different camps across the country that are free or reduced cost to us. We just have to get them there. Um, and then, you know, also with, uh, you know, uh, is it internships and, and uh, sort of the um, workforce development piece is really huge for us. Um, and, you know, once boys are really 14, uh, we start getting them internships. Um, oh, really? And, placing them with a lot of our, whether it be a financial firm or, um, you know, it could be at a university, which helps support us, supports us. Um, it could be, you know, if a boy wants to do scuba diving, we, you know, show him deep sea welding and get him certified. And so he can get a wow. career there. So, I mean, there's a lot of different um, aspects of the program that um, just are really fully enriched and transform the boys' lives, really. Um, it's really, we're there from when they wake up until they close their eyes, their eyes at night, so it's 24-7 uh, care for them. Man, that's awesome. It's outstanding what you're doing to help uh, make a major contribution in the community right now. Thank you. Your, your dad passed that in 1984. My dad passed two years afterward as well. I oh, remember wow. your dad playing for the team, so... Oh, um, wow. But one thing that really struck me as you having a great heart for the boys is how you took some of the, the pains of the past and made it into a positive for not just your future, but other people's future yeah. and the other kids' future. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was, um, you know, it was very, obviously, unfortunate, my, my, my dad passing. Um, and... You know, I think one thing that my mom did, well, I mean, she did multiple things well, but I mean, one of the things that she she did is she made sure that, uh, one, I saw counseling, right? And, you know, I think, you know, and, and you know, sometimes we like to, uh, uh, this kind of taboo to talk about counseling and, right, and talking right. to somebody, I think. But um, at the time, she really had that foresight to say, hey, I started at six years old. You know, dad died at three. I started at six. Um, and all the way until I was in my late teens, actually, is when I saw. So, you know, I got, I understood my feelings. I understood what was going on. Um, and if, you know, there were some anger challenges uh, that, that I may have felt because nobody understood me or I didn't have anybody to go to that was male, I can understand. Um, I had my male therapist, right? Or I had my... Um, I had people there that um, my mom brought in to do a little check, you know, and 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 that was good for me. Um, but you know, and also I think having another side of it where I got a chance to see a lot of the opportunities that are out there, you know, and I think working for Tom Benson and and you know being his chief aide for a few years really. Um, showed me the, the possibilities. Um, traveling with them for three years, um, you know, it, it really and seeing everything from a kind of an aerial view, mm -hmm. um, I really felt, a, why is this? Why are more boys not seeing this? I mean, that was right. really one right. of the main reasons why I started the program because I was like, this is people aren't seeing this. Boys aren't seeing this of, of color, you know, right. specifically. Even though we take any any boy into our program, but. Um, this is what they need to see. They need to be connected to these opportunities. They need to be prepared for these opportunities because there's so many out there waiting on them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I didn't want any boys to, to slip, especially the ones that um, may, you know, we feel, um, you know, uh, going through, like I said, trauma, have economic difficulties, or, or in, you know, call it inner city, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's specifically because we want to build those into leader, those boys into leaders, so that they bring the rest of their neighborhood, the rest of their their groups um, up. And there's there's many gems, as you know, in every in the, in, his, in communities. And so we want to bring that right. to light. Right. You know, um, you speak from a place where I'm kind of familiar with, being that a lot of people are not exposed to different. How do I say different other aspects of life, right? Sure. And being under such a important person in the community like Tom Benson for a few years yourself, what are some of those things that you have learned from Mr. Benson and you are yeah. putting it into some of the kids right now? Well, the first thing is it's the easy. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. And yeah, you know, right, that's right, that's something right. that we've heard from many people, but um, you know that was that was on it was on a plaque on his 
in, in his office, and it's something that he said all the time. Um, and it's very true, you know, um, the strong will survive, you know, and so we have to look at other opportunities. If, if, if something's mm-hmm. not going our way, what, where are the opportunities there, you know, and, and, and um, you know, like think a lot of it's about leadership, you know, and staying positive, um, you know, and, and I have to lead this organization and lead the boys. And so they're going to react to how I come off, right? If, if I exactly. feel defeated, if I feel uh, frustrated, they're going to see that. Um, and so always keeping my composure and thinking optimistically, I think was another thing. Um, you know, also he came into work at eight and left at five every day, even though he was a, a self-made billionaire, he didn't have to, but he did. Right. Um, and he, his work ethic was something to be admired. And so uh, that's another thing I think I took away from him. Well, you know, Tom Benson, had a strong work ethic. You see it in the proof in the pudding, I would say, from all of the businesses, ventures, as well as what he's done in the community and helping people in New Orleans. And you seem like you're following that same p- footprint. Your mom is very instrumental as well. She has a public uh, viewing in th- the New Orleans area as well. What did you learn from her other than just being that strong mom? Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, my mom actually had, um, she, she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis um, a few years after really? my dad had passed. Wow. Uh, so she, yeah, so she left her. She was working at uh, Martin Marietta. And she, was, uh, she was a teacher before that. Um, so she, she left that. So she was a single mom raising us, you know. Um, but my mom is ex- very consistent. <laughs> I'm extremely yeah. consistent. Yeah. And very prepared for every situation. Um, and, uh, you know, really not just men. I mean, she, I don't think she's ever said a bad word about anybody, you know. And so wow. I think those those sort of um, those three things, I think, is, uh, you know, very impactful on me um, for sure. Good, good. You know, I won't hold it against you. You went to St. Aug and I attended 35. Uh, but okay. we, <laughs> but it's we have all a, good. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. It's nothing but love, man. Nothing but love. But you have a connection that's kind of similar to our connected with me personally as well. Walter Harris Jr. He just passed away from complications from COVID-19. And sure. you guys started a fund in his name. Walter and I yes. were bandmates at McDonald 35. Tell us a little bit about why you guys were, I guess, inspired or compelled to be able to do so sure. to try to help. Yeah, out. well, you know, I, I actually uh, worked with his dad, um, you know, okay. doing t- in, in the music industry for and in jazz um, for a while. I, I used to run New Orleans Jazz Institute for a little bit, um, and that's how I got to know him okay. and then and hear about him. And um, I know that I I had a friend uh, Ronald Career that had called me and he said, you know, I, you saw that Walter had passed, and you know, he wanted to to do something to to honor him, uh, you know, and his legacy and and also his wife. And I said, look, I said, this is a, a perfect opportunity, I think, um, because it's paying it forward. Um, and, you know, just what he meant to, what Walter you know, Jr. meant to a lot of the, the people in the community, um, you know, it's really inspiring. And, and it's great to, uh, to, to have, you know, be able to do this, um, you know, and as somebody that had mentored, it falls in line with what we do with mentorship. Um, and as somebody, he's someone that, that mentored a lot of people. So, you know, this is why we wanted to continue that legacy and start this uh, scholarship in his name yeah, so that good. we're able to um, we're able to support more boys in the community. As I said earlier, going from 100 to 200 boys is an extreme. It's a, it's a big jump for us um, because of how, how intense we uh, support we give each boy. Um, but it's, it's scholarships like this that will allow us to get there. Um, and to be able to uh, sustain our program. So um, that's why. Awesome. You know, a few of my bandmates, as well as uh, some of the uh, drum majors that, and Walter was a drum major behind me, uh, we are going to be giving to the scholarship fund in his name. So thank you so much for being able to do so. Thank you all. No, no no problem, man. Look, uh, one last question. COVID-19, it really has uh, impacted the Louisiana community and mostly in New Orleans as well. 
And I understand you guys have a fund for that. Tell us a little yep. bit about the COVID-19 fund that you established. Yep. Well, you know, COVID-19 fund um, essentially supports a number of things. One being, you know, our loss in funding that we're going to have because of this. Um, and you can imagine there's there's uh, businesses that are affected who support us. There's individuals that are affected. Um, so when we look at our, our budget for 2020, we see a reduction in what, an anticipated reduction uh, of revenue per month and what we're going to okay. what we're facing. So um, that's crucial funding that we need to to have to sustain our boys. So that's one thing um, is that it helps support that gap. Another thing is also, um, you know, there's a lot of basic services that are needed during this time, like food services, which are very important um, to our to our families. And every single day we're, we're at the office, you know, delivering food, working on our, you know, trying to match our relationships with restaurants. And, you know, if we have to purchase food, th those various things. So it helps with that. Any emergency needs that we have coming up, there's teletherapy uh, that's important, but also education for the boys. There's boys that um, we're, we're lacking a few laptops. So, um, you know, for the boys to be able to continue their education. Uh, and so it, it really helps with um, the, with all those those three things and more. Um, you'd be, I don't know if you'd be surprised, but there's a lot of emergency calls that we get daily. Um, I mean, it could be, you know, just even if, our, you know, there's medication that um, a grandmother isn't able to get right. that's raising her boy or that a boy doesn't have, you know, we're going out to help them um, to get that, you know. Um, whether it's uh, that or behavioral needs <laughs> that are going on because, you know, now you have everybody in the house. In the house, um, frustrated, in the right? House. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, you, you have grandmother that, you know, if, the, if you know, the grandson or, or an aunt or a nephew goes outside um, and she's older, she's at risk, right? right? And right. so not knowing, you know, what he may be, bringing back is he washing his hands and he's like who's he around those type of anxieties are things that that we're that they're facing too so we've got to make sure that we have mental health services there for behavioral health services there for the boys and the family support well that's important man because a lot of people kind of forget that most of the young men who uh, my dad was a juvenile probation officer for 20 oh, wow. years in New Orleans man Oh. And he dealt with a lot of One young experience. men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he dealt with a lot of young men who didn't have their, their fathers at home, right? Mm -hmm. Or may not have both parents at home. Mm -hmm. And they had to deal with uh, the grandparents had to become that next layer of uh, guardianship for those guys, sure. right? So people kind of forget that they need help. Because mm -hmm. they are not fully engaged with the technical, let's say technology, right? Exactly. And yeah. you brought that up as a, a good point. Bridging that gap for them only can help them out and help these young men out. But also the mentorship part is, is important as oh, well. Yeah. Now, since uh, you guys can't meet as much personally yep. with them are you guys doing uh, are the mentors content contacting them by phone or like via skype or something to that nature yeah yeah absolutely we we uh so so each individual mentor has a certain requirement to to connect with their and, and we don't have them for that they, they actually talk probably every day every other okay. day with their good. mentees which is good um but a lot of them do like yeah facetime they'll do um you know uh skype uh call phone text um but also we have um you know we have we, we have still our 20 or so activities a month okay. we're just doing them virtually okay so you know instead of like if we have equine therapy or financial literacy we like yesterday we did a cooking class for for the the boy and his mom with with one of our chefs um you know we have a virtual um uh, basketball tournament that, that, they're, that they're going to be doing. Um, okay. We have, you know, uh, a doctor, actually an ER doctor that's coming in to talk to the boys um, about what's going on because the boys may think, oh, this is an adult issue and it, right. how it affects them and how they affect, like you said, the people in their homes and answers any questions for them. So uh, we're, like, we're, we're doing that every Friday. So we're, whether it be a nurse or a doctor, they actually – you know, talk and, uh, you know, specifically to the kids about and updates on what the virus, what's happening with the virus, what to expect. Um, so a lot of those things are still going on through, we're using Zoom. Um, okay. And so, 
that's that's the best thing. Awesome. Now, are any of the Saints players or any people within the organization still reaching out to you guys or attached to the program still? Yeah, we have, um, you know, Deuce McAllister sponsors uh, 10 boys actually to go to Asheville, North Carolina each year for, for camp. Um, wow. And he's one of our ambassadors. Um, Benjamin Watson has been great to us. He's one of our ambassadors and still connected, even though he's not living in, or he's not, you know, um, not playing for the Saints anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it's funny, Marcus Colston called me yesterday um, wow. from New Jersey and said that, you know, during the, this, this time of the virus, he said he's he's been wanting to reach out to us for a while and, like, just provided him that opportunity because all the other noise, I guess, is, you know, from businesses right. is kind of selling for him. So he reached out. We had a great conversation. And um, so he's going to come on um, and, and help us out. Um, Thomas Morstead uh, has been a good supporter of us as well. Um, you know, Drew Brees has made a, a contribution several years ago. To, to He actually hung out with the boys for about two hours and played all-time quarterback for him. It really? was really cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. And so, you know, we have some of the – some of the play. Eric McCoy is another in the, the Saints starting center right now. He's come on about – I'd say about three months ago. Um, one to, more than a mentor, and it's interesting because he's, he's actually been – I mean – he he's probably been to at least 20 25 activities in the last like two three months i mean he's he's literally i mean he was on a zoom with them yesterday i mean he, he and his wife bianca have been very uh great with the boys and and um and working with them so it's been awesome man that's great to hear uh yeah. Let's say somebody's looking at us and they want to be able to contribute or try to help or mentor. What do they do? What's the next step? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think I always tell people the best thing to do is just browse through our website uh, just to get a feel and understanding. There's a ton of videos on our, on our site and information um, prior to them, you know, even calling us and making sure that this is something that they that they are interested in. So sonofasaint.org is our website. I also tell people to go on our Instagram if they do that because because it shows okay. a lot of videos and images of the boys and things that we're doing. Um, but to volunteer specifically, they can they can actually go on our site and there's, there's to be a mentor or volunteer. There's one tab and you can has all the information to sign up. We have our um, our community outreach and volunteer coordinator William Jones uh, and his email is William at sonofasaint.org. They can email him directly okay. um, and he'll be able to steer them in the right direction, whether it's mentoring or volunteering. Awesome. Um, do you have any message that you'd like to get out to the community right now uh, in support of what's going on, especially with COVID, as well as uh, any families who may have been impacted by uh, the, the virus? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the biggest thing is just let's not forget about the kids, you know, um, and not to say that, that we are. I know a lot. Um, and, and look, our, our frontline workers are amazing, and I can only imagine what they're going through right now. Right. I mean, I mean, it's 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 really I can't even put into words. Um, we, we don't want to forget our kids. You know, we don't. The kids are watching us right now. They're watching how we're responding to them, how we're, the attention that we're giving them right now, what, what sort of resources. Um, and so we want to make sure that that, you know, they're they're seen, they're heard, they're, they're feeling taken care of as well, because um, they are our future, obviously. And, and, and look, in the next five, seven years, eight years, they are going to be the nurses and doctors and True. everybody taking care of, 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 of us. So, um, you know, I would say that and just, you know, I, I, I think most of all, is just try to keep a positive uh, attitude as much as possible because it's contagious and people are going to um, uh, also feel positive if, if you are, you know, and it, it's, a, it's kind of a vibe. And um, so, so as much as you can, just, just try to, you know, try to put a smile on your face and try to, uh, to, to have some positive words and, and um, you know, uh, uh, pray for the best. So. Yeah, yep. definitely. Guys, this is Sonny Lee. He is a son of a saint. And he's the founder of Son of a Saint Foundation in New Orleans, Louisiana. Sonny, man, look, I really do appreciate you spending some time with me. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate this. And